This conference will now be recorded. All right, so thank you for taking the time here today to learn more about Help Hope Live. As you know, my name is Sunny Mullen and I am the outreach manager for Help Hope Live. And we are a nonprofit that assists individuals living with catastrophic injuries and illnesses to go into their communities and fundraise for their unmet medical and related expenses. And what we do is quite literally in our name, we help ease the financial burden of a medical crisis. We provide hope at a time of overwhelming need. And we support patients to live their lives as fully as possible. And this, I, this slide in particular is very pertinent today because with this quote from Christopher Reeve, it is actually his birthday today. So once you choose hope, anything's possible. We like to say that here. In 2019 alone, we were able to help a lot of individuals. Over 450 new families accepted our help and became Help Hope Live clients that started fundraising with us. And we helped them fundraise for over 28 new wheelchair accessible vans, over 500 rehab and PT visits, amongst so many other pieces of equipment and medical costs. Um, we're so lucky that we're able to do this and still be able to do this from home with 2020 being a year unlike any other. We are very lucky that we're still able to reach our community um, through virtual fundraising. And so how do we do all of this? How do we achieve this? What's our advantage to people choosing Help Hope Live over other platforms? What we do is we provide the individuals with a one-on-one -on -one client services coordinator that gives them all the tools necessary to go into their communities and put on successful fundraisers, such as creating flyers, helping them write their stories, uh, everything, all the nitty gritty that they need. So they get that personal support that you certainly won't find anywhere else. Somewhere that, someone that you can call on the phone and talk to Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. We have a finance team that you can call and speak to on the phone. And our nonprofit status allows individuals to make tax deductible donations and also receive matching grants and foundation donations on their behalf. Um, along with our nonprofit status, the way that we function is that we send these individuals out into the world to do the fundraising. The funds come back to Help Hope Live and our Help Hope Live assets so that they should not affect any of their, any of the individual's asset-based benefits or become taxable income to them. So this allows them to keep their benefits, keep any benefits they might be on. And by us maintaining control of the funds, you know that we are doing the right things with the funds. We are using them for the right reasons. We are a very trusted organization that has had 16 years of four-star charity navigator rating. And those types of credentials, again, you won't find anywhere else. And so those are our three main pillars that we like to stand upon that really allows people to choose us and knowing that they're choosing the right organization to help them fundraise. Another thing that we do that not many other places will do is we verify every campaign we work with through a medical professional. So we get a medical professional to sign off on the fact that this individual truly is injured, truly has this medical condition, truly needs an organ transplant, which is another community that we serve. And because of this, all of their community, when they go out to do fundraising, knows that they are fundraising for the right reasons and can trust their honor and can trust what they're doing. So just one more layer of that trust and reliability in helping these individuals fundraise and live a more stress-free life. So like I said, we set them up with the client services coordinator and they help set them up with their custom campaign page. So this is something that you know, you're pretty familiar with. You've seen these types of pages before, but our pages really can be customized to anything that they need. They can put videos here, they can put pictures here. This is where they would direct everyone for their fundraising information, for their story. Um, they can leave, they can put their thermometer up there if they would like to or not, that's up to them. Their community can leave messages of support here. And as you can see on the right, we're also fully mobile compatible. So it makes it very easy for anyone to be able to access the, the website from their phone from anywhere they are. And also another 
feature that we give them is that you can subscribe to an individual's campaign page. So anytime that they make an update to their page, a new message, a new piece of their story gets released, you'll get an email letting you know. So to keep everyone as engaged, and up to date as possible, which we found is always the best success at fundraising is to have the most up-to-date information as possible on your campaign page. And so here, here you'll see on the right is our client, Robbie Drasher, that has an Indigo exoskeleton. Um, and this is one of the many pieces of equipment that we assist our clients to fundraise for, such as wheelchairs, modified vehicles, home modifications, FES bikes, vision therapy, anything relating to their injury and their condition that they need they we we will most likely help them fundraise for and so in robbie's case some of you might be familiar with him already but he you know he has a really great support system we were able to help him fundraise we were able to get and help him get those funds relatively quickly and then he he did really well with his exoskeleton and we were just talking about the fact that unfortunately in 2020 i think it maybe has set him back a little bit and so we're hoping that he'll get back out there again and, and start using it a little bit more but just to see his smile and when he got that exoskeleton it was such a great success for his campaign and something that we can all you know be really happy with at the end of a week that we helped one of our clients get something so so impressive and so life-changing other things that we pay for number one thing really is caregiver expenses that's something everyone will ask about. Um, insurance premiums, any travel or relocation costs related to their injury. A lot of times, you know, if you're living up north in colder climates, some of our clients will travel down south to warmer clients for the winter and relocate. We can help cover some of those costs. Um, service animals, so a lot of different things, as well as quality of life, adaptive sports, activity-based rehab, obviously is a really important uh, expense that we cover. So there, it's quite a list of things that we can assist individuals to fundraise for in their honor. And I will always let them know that if they don't see something explicitly on our list, to ask their client services coordinator. Just because it's not written out on our list doesn't mean we won't cover it. We are always open to widening our expanse of things we cover and seeing what else is out there. So I always tell them to just ask the question. Um, it's it's much better than just assuming we won't we won't cover it. So with all these things that we cover, how do we do it? It's actually fairly simple. Once they go out and do the fundraising, the funds come to help hope live in their honor. They're held in regionally restricted funds, depending on where the individual lives. And then they submit their fund request form with their bill. And we help pay direct, mostly directly to the vendor. We like to pay direct to vendor as much as possible to relieve that financial stress from the individual and their family. But we can sometimes reimburse them with a receipt if it's, you know, sometimes certain rehabs they'll have to pay for up front or medications along those lines. So these forms are found on their campaign page and are easily downloadable so that they can just get everything on their computer. They can fill this out on their computer and they can scan their bills to us and email them directly to our fund request email. So it goes right to our finance team. And you know, in 2019 alone, we, fund, we processed over 1000 fund requests. And I know we are definitely on our way to breaking that record this year if we haven't already. Um, 2020 certainly has not you know, just because people are at home, people still have medical bills. So we have still been processing. We're very lucky that we've still been able to process and help people fundraise while everyone's been stuck at home. And as I had talked about, some of the things that the client services coordinators can help them with, press releases, flyers, social media campaigns, the client services coordinators are really creative and come up with some amazing ideas for press releases for their flyers. Um, and social media campaigns. Facebook fundraising right now is one of our largest, especially in the time of virtual fundraising, one of our most successful ways of fundraising. So that's just one way to dip your toes into the fundraising world. We also at Help Up Live have a plethora of partners that we've been working on. And these have just been 
you know, growing and growing. So this is just a small grouping of them. We offer different deals on vehicles. We offer some partner discounts on, you know, say adaptive clothing. Um, the gentleman in the middle, Josh Basil, is a disability rights lawyer that can answer questions about getting back to work while being on benefits. So you manage your income well so that it doesn't, you know, you know, there's certain income restrictions that people have. So that's where he comes in. So we have a lot of different partners that really can help our clients more than we can, you know, we're very great at the fundraising side of things. We help them pay their bills, but we're also looking at their full their full life, their full quality of life. So we're happy to be able to do this as much as possible. And another way we're doing that is that this year in June, we published a full resource guide for our clients. So we now offer three separate resource guides for each community that we serve. These are found on our website and they're e easily downloadable. And they just offer endless resources really. Um, and we're constantly updating them with anyone that wants to be put in the resource guide. And it's just another great way for us to be able to help the full person of our client, the, their mind, body, spirit, something that we might not be able to help them out with, they can find there. So that was a really great goal of ours in 2020 that we were able to achieve. And you know that's kind of us in a nutshell, but there are definitely some common questions that we get, such as how do I get started? It is definitely a lot easier than some people might think as a lot of people think it is a little daunting to get started in our world. They just have to contact us for a quick overview, a conversation with the client services coordinator. They would either contact us via phone and speak to a coordinator right away or go onto our get started page on our website and get started themselves. And then that will trigger a phone call from a client services coordinator. After that first conversation, they will receive a welcome packet with our application. They will then complete the application, which also has the medical verification form in it. And you launch your campaign page on our website with a $25 donation from anyone in your community. And that makes it live so people can search for you, they can start donating. And at that point, and especially once we get the medical verification form back, we're fundraising, the funds are coming in in your honor, we're, be, we're able to pay bills in your honor as well. So this can take 24 hours, it can take a few weeks. It really depends on how quickly ever the individual can get all the information together. And the one place it will sometimes get held up is the medical verification form. So that's where that can come in from anyone such as a doctor, a physical therapist, a social worker, whomever on their team knows their condition best and can better and can verify their medical condition. And so as we've talked about a little bit already, what makes us different from other fundraising platforms that you might be familiar with? As I talked about before, those three pillars really, the personal support. I will say that's my personal favorite thing that we offer is that personal support to all of our clients. It's very important. We create really great lifelong relationships because especially in the catastrophic injury and catastrophic illness community, these individuals are fundraising with us for their lifetime. So we really get to know them. And the custom campaign materials, the media and social support, those are things that you just won't find anywhere else. The tax deductibility is really important for a lot of donors and the being able to keep their coverage, to be able to keep their benefits is very important, you know, in this world where really anyone is just looking to cut, <laughs> cut down people with disabilities at this point, I feel is, you know, the restrictions on income and the, the restrictions that they have is just unreal. So the way that we're able to manage the funds do it safely, do it in a way that is trusted and reliable. It's really, it's it's just something that a lot of their communities really enjoy and rely upon. And so are there any fees involved? One of the most important questions. There is a nominal 5% administration fee on all donations that come in from the donors. But as of right now, we do have software on our website when you donate that will allow you to cover the administration fee within your donation. And we're finding that about 60% of donors are covering that fee with their donation. So that's been a really great um, addition to our website over the last couple months. 
And beyond that, everything is free for our clients. We do not charge them for anything, any of our services that we provide. And what if I'm nervous? We get a lot of people who are very nervous, very anxious about starting fundraising or asking individuals for help. It's a real, pride, it's a real prideful thing and we get that and respect that. So we have a few easy ways that we can start them off. First and foremost, definitely the Facebook fundraising as we discussed before. It's easy, it's clean. You just set it up and, and forget it really. You set, set it and forget it as you've heard. And uh, that's become really popular over the last couple of months. But we also do provide all of our clients free of charge, a, fun, a personalized fundraising video. So this is a personalized ask from our executive director on their behalf using their pictures and their stories that they can easily email out or you know, post to their Facebook page and it draws people back to their campaign page, allows them to donate. And it's just an easy way for them to tell their story while maybe they're working with their, campaign, their client services coordinator to plan a bigger fundraiser or to plan a strategy around what to do next. So those are the two easy ways that they can start fundraising without really having to do a lot of work. And so what kind of fundraisers should they do? This really runs the gamut. It is totally up to their community, to what their community and themselves, their interests are. Um, poker tournaments, we actually, just as Help Hope Live, had a pro poker tournament last night. Um, yard sales, we had a client in June or July raise over $10,000 over two weekends of yard sales. Um, and then obviously, you know, golf outings, pasta dinners, there's really no fundraiser that's too big or too small. It really just depends on the motivation of your community and creativity. We have a client, I don't know if it happened yet, but we have a client who is doing a watch, a Star Trek watch party. I mean, anything that you're interested in, you can create excitement around with your community, you can turn it into a fundraiser. And obviously now virtual fundraisers. Uh, like I said, last night we did a poker tournament. It, that works out really well and there's a lot of easy ways to do that. We also have a whole gaming program that we do. Um, there's different types of, like I said, watch parties, open mic nights maybe. So a lot of people have really focused on pivoting their fundraisers into virtual fundraisers. But as some places around the country are opening up a bit, some people are holding in-person, you know, responsibly in-person fundraisers again. Um, so it really just depends on the community again. And so this is where they work really closely with the client services coordinator to become creative and really flush out the ideas for these fundraisers. And that is pretty much us. You know, we're very lucky and really enjoy what we do. We really enjoy helping these communities get them back living a more independent lifestyle, whether that's giving, you know, helping them fundraise for a van or a home modification or an exoskeleton, whatever it is to help them lead a more independent lifestyle and raise the funds that they need. Um, we are here to help them with that. So I am here. I'm always here. I can send brochures. I can do another webinar. I can, whatever you guys need, whatever information you need, you have my information. And especially now you have my information. Um, and, you know, just let me know if, you know, William and Kate, especially if either of you have any questions, uh, I'm here to answer them or else we, you know, we just really appreciate all your time and your, your enthusiasm and interest in helping your, your patients start fundraising with us. Um, I do have a question. Is it possible or have you seen clients convert a, a GoFundMe to a, kind of a Help Hope Love fundraiser platform? So we are not able to transfer funds from GoFundMe into a Help Hope Live campaign just because it goes against the intent of those donations. Um, mm -hmm. You know, those donors didn't intend to donate to Help Hope Live. And mm -hmm. the things that you can use for GoFundMe are very different from us. So they, we just always advise them to keep their funds in, in GoFundMe or whatever platform they're using. They can pay for things that we, we won't cover. Um, maybe they need help with, you know, maybe they want to take a vacation or just those everyday things that we are mainly focused more toward things related to their injury. 
So just because of that donor intent um, and the tax deductibility status, we just aren't able to transfer those funds. Okay, got it. Yeah. But along these lines, Tony, you know, we might be able to, so someone who has already a GoFundMe page can continue that, they can still sign up with you, probably raise the training cost for a device through GoFundMe and then for the technology in itself, they can go through you, right? So there are, you know, yeah, and, I mean, and we certainly them. would want them to, you know, fundraise as much as possible through us. We just, we're not going to tell them to shut their GoFundMe down. It's just that we provide so much more than that platform does that you know we would definitely prefer them to be fundraising with us um so yeah. it really depends on what their what their interests are yeah i have another quick question and i know this might have changed since we spoke you know a couple of years ago um initially there was kind of you would do like an interview to see if someone would qualify for fundraising campaigns this is uh, and you mentioned the medical kind of um, form that you want to have completed but would you um, reject someone uh, based on not having a social network that would be successful to raise enough funds for an Indigo, for instance, knowing the, the high price tag? Or how do you go about that? You know, it's that we can set expectations yeah. as well out there. So that all takes place in that first conversation with the client services coordinator. They will talk to the individual about their medical background, about their community, try to see who their community is, what you know, what types of fundraisers might work best for them, and they will do everything in their power to see if they can have a successful help help live fundraising campaign. There are going to be some people that we maybe can't help. We we as much as we want to say we can help everyone, we certainly want to give realistic expectations. We don't want to set anyone up for failure. So after that first phone call, I mean, they'll send they'll send them the welcome packet. They'll send them the application. But if, if it, they need to get a feel for that community and if they don't have a community, we'll certainly work with them to see if there's anything we can do. But there is going to be a point that, you know, they'll have to feel like if we can or cannot help them. And unfortunately, that decision has to be made at some point, because like I said, we, we don't want to set anyone up for failure. Right. No, I think that's that's good. And then uh, I, I don't want to have all the questions, so Bill and Kate, feel free. but. So let's assume the indigo is 100,000, right? So it's expensive. Let's assume someone raises 50,000 and then achieves a plateau and they cannot go further. What can they do with this amount? I mean, it's not going to be enough for an indigo. Can they just get it from you and then use it for other means? Or how do you go about that if the goal has been established, but this particular item cannot be purchased with the raised, the raised funds? So when you're fundraising with Help Hope Live, you aren't necessarily fundraising just for an indigo. So we aren't restricting any funds just for that one piece of equipment. So obviously in your head, and it might be on the campaign page that you're fundraising for this piece of equipment, but unfortunately, if, if you don't end up reaching that goal, those funds are still there in your honor to serve your medical needs. So they can be used for your medical expenses. They can still go towards a car. They can still, um, yeah, we aren't restricting any funds specifically for one item. Um, that's, that's just not something we're able to do. And it goes against our mission and the fact that we're here to help the greater good with that. So on that respect though, that say someone raises above and beyond what they need, maybe they get the indigo and that's all they ever wanted. There might be some funds left in their campaign if they end up closing their campaign, which doesn't usually happen with this community, but say they do, or if they unfortunately pass away, if there are funds still remaining in their honor in the region, those funds stay within the region to then help other individuals with similar conditions. So we are always here to help the greater good and pay it forward as a nonprofit. We do assist individuals with altruistic grants, um, which are grants for our clients who maybe can't reach, maybe just need a few more hundred dollars here or there. We can sometimes cover that. Um, we also have emergency grants for non health uplift clients that is, up to $1,500 of to, to help solve an emergent need. So there's a lot of things that we're doing with those regional funds once they aren't used for the client anymore. Um, okay. So we're always here to help the greater good as much as possible. Good. How is Help Hope Live uh, funded? A lot of fundraising. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears of our own fundraising and events okay. that we do. Yeah, so we are all, and like 
I said, so we get that 5% administration fee mm -hmm. and certainly the donor covered fees at this point have been very helpful this year, but we have a development department that writes grants that, you know, that we do events every year. It's, they work extremely hard to raise funds and to keep us in business. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense, got it. What is the uh, biggest difference, am I on mute? No, what is the biggest difference between like you and GoFundMe? Are they just on an online thing or? So right off the bat, one of the biggest differences is the way that we fully function. We are a nonprofit and the way that we manage the funds allow and verify all of the campaigns allow you to know that the, the funds are all being used for medical reasons. GoFundMe or other platforms really don't have that overhead. There's no verifying what you're fundraising for. And in the end, those funds become your income. So it really could also jeopardize some of your benefits depending on which bank account those funds end up going into. Um, there's no personal support there. So while on the offset, it both looks like, it looks like we both do online fundraising, the way that we function is completely different. Um, we have, we are just a trusted and reliable source of fundraising because of the way yeah. that we function. Yeah, Sonny, you might go back to this one slide. I think you had a nice comparison between GoFundMe and yeah. Help. So, Bill, there, there you see, I think that that tax deductible to, uh, portion here you see is tax burden versus tax, so that's kind of the comparison, you know. So how, how is that how is that possible exactly? How is the it tax deductible with Help Hope Live? Well, go because we're not them. we're a nonprofit, so all all donations are tax deductible. Okay, and then I guess you distribute those funds then to the individual, whereas GoFundMe those are paid directly to the individual, and then it's looked at as considered income to that individual. Correct. So, so yeah. So when you're fundraising with Help Hope Live, you are fundraising for Help Hope Live in your honor. So all of okay. the funds become Help Hope Live assets and are held within regionally okay. restricted okay. funds. And then we pay out of that region toward those medical bills. So like I said before, like we aren't, we don't restrict any of those funds for specific items. While we do know that all of the funds are coming in in honor of a specific person, and we do honor that to the best of our ability. Um, mm -hmm. But you know. As I explained, if someone closes their campaign, we then can use those funds for other things. So they're not restricted. Um, for a GoFundMe, you have to put in a bank account for those funds to go into. And mm -hmm. so those become someone's personal income. Okay. So if somebody purchased an Indigo through a Help Hope Live kind of um, fundraiser, yeah. Yeah. then the actual purchase would come from Help Hope Live. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah, Got so it. it would be us writing the check and mm -hmm. in honor of the individual, and then you would send the indigo to the individual. Okay. Got it. Yeah, interesting. That's why you see some of these scams with GoFundMe possibly. Is the difference yep. yep. because okay. Well yeah, and, and Bill, I mean like you being in Pennsylvania, if you remember a few years back, unfortunately, that story of the couple on ninety five outside the stadium. So, oh yeah. So yeah. It's, yeah, that's right. Unfortunately, those are, I mean, I hate to say those are good press for us, but at the same time, it's awful. So you see people getting taken advantage of. And even just the fact of some people don't know, and I can't say everyone's, you know, financial situation, but a lot of these GoFundMes really do take off very quickly. And all of a sudden you have $75,000 going into someone's bank account. You don't, you don't know how that could possibly affect your, your financials. So, mm -hmm. um, a lot of these individuals that we're all servicing have a lot of income restrictions. And so they can't be seen with $75,000 or $100,000 in a bank account somewhere. Yeah, that's a really good point. So what is the best if um, we have individuals that are interested, like when we go out and we do these clinic days, is it best just to say, go online and start the process online or to call the number? Like what do you, what is, you know, kind of the easiest have you found for them to do? Um, so I would say it really depends on your relationship with them and what you think might be easiest for them. If they are someone that is fine with making a phone call, tell them to make that phone call. Okay. Um, okay. If they need a little bit more handholding, you have my information. You can certainly send them my way and I will introduce them to our client services manager and we can certainly go through that route. But we always, okay. we would prefer them to just make that phone call or go on to our get started by, uh, page. Because when you when you call our phone number, a client services coordinator is who picks up the phone. 
So okay. that's who they need to be talking to in the end anyway. But it really, we're, we're here to service the individual. So if they need a little bit more tutelage, we're here to help that. Okay, that's good to know. So along these lines, so, so this is a brochure that we have here. That might be an old one, you know? But yeah. I think- Oh, yeah. Cool. That does if look you old. Could, if you could send, probably I can send you the, uh, the, the addresses for our team members. But if yeah. you could send safety of these kind of brochures, then they can take them with them and can hand them out. The, the address is on, is on it and kind of a short description of what you guys are doing. I think that's the best way to probably, you know, educate them on help, hope, live, and then we can encourage them to contact you. And then uh, one thing obviously, and you realize this with probably Rob, we try to stay very close to these individuals to support them as well. Sometimes yeah. we do indigo walks and stuff like that. So yeah. we are, that's probably for your, for your um, team as well. So if they want to develop specific indigo campaigns, uh, to create awareness, we are happy to help as well and to be to stay involved uh, with our clinical team to support during walks, um, you know, dinners, whatever. So I think that's okay. certainly something we can help with as well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like we definitely can have the larger conversation about, you know, help hope live and in indigo maybe working together on a different level as well. Um, you know, you've seen our partners. We have the resource guide. We have a lot of different ways that we can be seen as working together, whatever that means for both of our organizations. So we can certainly right. discuss that. Um, but yeah, if you send me the, the addresses, we offer brochures in both English and Spanish. So if you if you ever need any Spanish ones, but we certainly can get the English ones out. Um, and I'm always here for any other information you might need. And we're right. just, yeah, we just appreciate you guys spreading our word and our mission around because we're all just trying to do the same thing in the end anyway. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Honey, can, it's a can, really great organization. Can you, all, can you send some of those uh, in a PDF form as well? Because I can, you know, communicate uh, email. Yeah. You can shoot an yep. email. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll send that. And we have a, a couple of one sheeters. Like we have our mission and impact statement that's really yep. good and very visual. And so I'll send that as well. And so you have some good things to talk off of. Um, great. And then once. Um, I guess I could hit stop stop recording at this point, but I'll send this once I figure out how to send this. Um, and then I can even send the PDF of this presentation as well. Yeah, that would be awesome. Great. Yeah, that would be awesome.